Welcome to Bible Education Institute. My name is Reverend Henry Kelly. Today, the sermon message we're going to be covering today is when good people do nothing. Uh, today is Sunday, June the 28th of 2020, and we find ourselves in America and also a lot of the world in a mess. Uh, right now in America, um, they have people who have come in who are complete godless human beings who come in and they want to overturn America and they're destroying the statutes so we don't remember history. They're also now saying, well, any statutes of Christ, which uh, which is all made up because the Bible says no man has seen Christ, but anyways, it's a... Remembrance about Christ because we're founded on Christ and the Bible. But they're now doing all this and there's not a lot of people standing up. The churches today are not doing anything. They just sit back and do what they're told. I'm like, are you crazy? America itself was born out of the... Uh, the wanting of being free because they were under the British. So then the British wanted to tax more and to take over more and to just treat America because it was more of a of a colonies and it was more of a like a territory area that they had took over, which the people were supposed to be supposed to have the same rights as England did, but they were starting to see America as just nobody, so they just started doing whatever they wanted to do without rights, and that's. When the godly people stood up, uh, even though it was a small percentage, about 15, 20%, just like now where the people stand up and fight, while the rest of them are either trying to figure out what's going on or they don't want to get involved or whatever. But I'm telling you, if you don't stand for something, you fall for everything. Let me tell you what the Bible says. Um, I'm going to be reading from King James and from the NIV. The reason why I'm doing that is because I know I, I, I may have a lot of people say, well, we just need to stick with the King James Version. I love the King James Version. It's, it's my favorite version. That's what I was um, raised on and uh, trained in. But I'm learning that we also need to use uh, some of the more modern versions because most people who are coming into Christ don't know anything. And the new verbiage of today... It was very lacking in the King James. Of course, you can study it, but a lot of people uh, uh, need to get their feet wet to find out what the Bible says, so I, I try to use both. So I use the King James and the, the NIV, the New International Version, and um, and I will tell you when I'm which version that I'm reading out of, but my favorite is King James. Just, just letting you know that for those who favor the King James, that's great. But remember, Bible Education Institute is here to help people to understand the Bible. That's the first thing. And um, so I use the King James and the NIV, the New International Version. Um, reason being, so people can understand. Because sometimes it's hard while you're learning. Now once you learn and stuff, then you, know, you can start going to the King James. But I try to use both to make the Bible simple to understand. That's the whole point of us being here is that. That's what this ministry is all about. So if you turn in your Bibles, the Old Testament, the Proverbs, chapter 29 and verse 2. The Old Testament, chapter Proverbs, verse 29 and 2. I'll be reading out of the King James Version, but you can use whatever version you may have while you're watching this video, whether it's King James and IV or... Uh, the Living Bible, whatever, you know, just be careful with the new versions because sometimes they do get watered down. And so you have to be careful. Like the Message Bible, I wouldn't recommend that. that that's more of an illustration. Okay, so Proverbs chapter 29 verse 2 says this in the King James Version. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. So in other words, what that saying is when you have... When a nation starts to get either apathetic or they get to where they don't care because they have the freedoms and they get lazy, they don't care.
care about voting or anything else. Then what happens is the wicked, who knows how to motivate people, will get their people who support them to make sure that they vote. Did you know, according, uh, you go to the facts of David Barton, and he has a ministry called Wall Builders, and he'll tell you all about the, um, how politics works and uh, the Christianity in politics and Christianity and our founding fathers and how they were, they were not deists, they were actual believers in Jesus Christ. And so what you hear today is a complete lie from hell. Because Satan wants to to come after people and to tell them, no, what you're hearing is false. Here's the new way. Just like he did with Eve when he went to her in the snake, uh, snake form. And he said, are you sure that's what God said? So he puts doubt in your mind to get you away from the truth and into the lie. But only truth sets you free, not a lie. The lie just keeps you going deeper and deeper and more you become more depressed more uh, you become more hopeless because it's the wrong way if you're living in the wrong way not according to the bible god's holy word you say oh well man wrote it right it, it was god it was uh men who were inspired by god to write the bible what's funny is i find when people say that and they usually shoot right off with that well, I don't believe it because a man wrote it. Really? So why do you go to school for? Men wrote those books and you believe it. You don't even question it. You know, they say, well, you, uh, uh, you came from a monkey. Really? So you believe evolution that you really have to have more faith to believe that than to believe that God created male and female, Adam and Eve. And to me, it just makes no sense and it's insanity. But this is the lie that Satan loves to give people. Because it seems like the right thing, but it's not. And if you're in the wrong, and you're believing the wrong thing, and you reject God, and you reject His Word, you're going to be hell-bound. That means when you die, your spirit will be in hell for the rejection of Christ, of breaking God's moral law. The Ten Commandments is called the moral law. And we lie, we steal, no matter how long ago it was, or if you... If you ever did it one time, no matter how young you were, it don't matter. It doesn't matter. You're guilty until you repent of your sins. Say, God, forgive me for my law breaking of um, your commandments of lying and stealing and look at another person with lust. What Jesus said, that's the same as uh, uh, committing adultery in your heart because you're thinking of you know, how you would have sexual relations with a person or whatever all in your mind you just made it up and you just do it in a few seconds come on we all go there we all have been there with you watching tv or some actor or actress or whatever you know and so many people watch pornography you don't think nothing of it i'm telling you that's adultery you committing in your heart and your mind mostly in your heart so don't think all this stuff here's the biggest thing people reject god because they don't want to believe that somebody's watching them 24 7 everything they do would you watch pornography and you know jesus christ was sitting right there watching you do that probably not but because you can't see him you think oh i can't be real no uh people tell me about hawaii i've never been there it sounds beautiful but 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 i believe it's there by faith uh the chair i'm about to sit I'm automatically thinking it's going to hold me, so I don't try and check it out and uh, it's, go see who made it and all that. No, you just you're going by faith and you're going to believe you're going to sit down and it's not going to break. And sometimes it does, sometimes it don't. You know, stuff like that does happen. I've had a friend of mine. He was a uh, uh, he was a uh, pastor and uh, he came to to the house uh, for lunch or dinner or something like that, and we had just got some new chairs. Then believe it or not, the one he sat in was the one that was that had some problems with it and actually broke and fell. <laughs> so that's just how things go. You know, fortunately, it, you know, it wasn't high and we had a rug and all that, so nobody got hurt. But it just goes to show you, you know, we just do things by faith. We go to a doctor. We don't know if he's really a doctor or not. We don't know if he actually went to school. It could be somebody pretending to be one. He writes you a prescription. Here, take this. This will help you. You don't know if it's going to help you. Then you go to a drugstore. Then you got to go by faith, believing that that drug's not going to kill you, but help you. We can do all that, but you can't believe 
that God created the heavens and the earth. When you look around, you see trees, bunny rabbits, all the oceans, the skies. Uh, you see the fish and all the creatures in the ocean and, and giraffes and lions and all this stuff. Somebody had to create all that. If you look at a building, you know there was a creator because somebody built the building. Somebody designed it and created it. It's the same for the world. Somebody designed it and they created it, which was God. We just didn't pop up like that. And this whole thing that I'm covering is exactly what the problem is in the world today and every day. Especially right now, because of so many people have been taught in the public school system, which is nothing but it's a joke now, because did you know that the public school system was set up to teach Jesus Christ? In fact, I have copies of the actual... Uh, uh, um, New England Primer that actually has what they taught and even to learn or uh, to learn your ABCs and stuff you learn it with Jesus had all the biblical references to that for the letters this is this is how you would learn and everything had Christ in it everything math English whatever it was all around the Bible and that's why our nation was so great but that was took out in 1920 they changed the format and they started teaching evolution. They started teaching all this stuff. And this is the mess you have today. And they've quadrupled down on it in the last 50 years. And now you have nothing but followers. They used to teach to be leaders, to think for yourself. In fact, in the elementary and middle school kind of thing, because they used to have like one-room schoolhouses. So they all were there together, but they had different learning, but they all helped each other. That's how it was formed. But they used to have debates. Uh, even in, like, you know, if you're in seventh, eighth grade, you'd have debates about different political things and stuff like that to teach you to think for yourself. They don't do that anymore. And then their test wasn't, they didn't teach you the test, they taught you. Then they just give you uh, questions to answer that was from what you should have learned. But it wasn't teaching to a test. Did you know this is fact? If you go to... David Barton of Wall Builders and watch his videos and look on his website of Wall Builders and stuff and you can learn. He also has a radio show, podcast and stuff like that. But uh, um, he was saying that he has given that the test that they did have that was just based on what the student should have learned. Did you know that all the PhDs now, everyone has never been able to pass it? And the test is the seventh grade test. That's why we're in the mess today. They're teaching evolution that there's no God. We, we became monkeys and all this stuff. We came from the ocean or whatever. And then became monkeys and then somehow became a man and all this crazy stuff. Right? Then they teach, well, the world is a uh, hundred billion years old, uh, years old. They can't say that there's no proof. It's all theory, but now they're teaching theory as proof. It is not. But when, so then when they get out of 12th grade, if they go to college, it gets even worse because then they find communists teaching our children. And this is what we have in the streets today. You have, from what I was hearing, it is 5% of America is doing that. The rest of them don't believe that, but they're just sitting by. Why? It's our duty to do something. Let me read you a true quote. And here's the quote. The quote is um, Edmund Burke, and he was a, a English par proletarian. He and he was actually born in Ireland in the 1700s. And here's his famous quote that has been around for a long time since I've been alive and I'm 60 years old and it says uh, he says this from Edmund Burke the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing so if you stand by the sidelines and think somebody else is going to do it you're deadly wrong that's why you have um the communist countries that have turned is because people just went along go along Went along to go along because they didn't want to make waves. They just want to live their life. Well, if you're not involved in standing up for what's right, 
then you won't have a country. Right now, Venezuela, the last, I think it was three, four years ago, they were lackadaisical, and so they voted this guy in who said he was something else, but he wasn't, and everything he said he was going to do was of a communist, socialist nation. Socialism is the same thing as communism. He promised all this, and and, and uh, the people are going to have all. It's going to be a collective thing. No, it never works. Did you know that in America, when it was first started to be, I'm here with England, started to send people here to to make colonies and to settle it. It was in the 1600s. They had Jamestown. They first came and they tried the collective thing where everybody worked. They put it into a pile, then you just grab what you needed. And then they found out that wasn't working. Because you only had a handful of people working and the rest of them just quit working because they said, well, don't matter whether I work or not, I'm still going to get the same thing. That's communism, right? Then the government distributes, they tell you what you can and can't do and, and what you can and can't have to eat. They dictate to you and if they feel like taking away so you can die, they will. They say, well, we don't need these people no more. Let's just get rid of this group. Boom. You start death or they just shoot you. That's right. So that wasn't working because you had mothers who had babies. Well, I can't because I got a baby, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so then it went back to the system of which we know as capitalism or the free market system where it says whatever you do, you keep. Guess what happened? Overnight, everybody grabbed their babies and started going out and working hard because it was going to be there. So the, the more they worked, the more they had. Instead of just having barely enough, they had plenty because they worked hard. That's the free market system. It's very simple. You're free to earn whatever you want to. You're free to have land. Uh, you're free to have rights. That means the government doesn't tell you what to do. The only thing the government's supposed to be, they're supposed to say small, is it's just to protect you from other, uh, from, uh, from other countries trying to come in and take you over. And that's all they're supposed to do is just to protect you. That's it. Starting to get into education and all like that, that states. This is how the founding fathers, which they got it from the Old Testament. That's how the Old Testament set up, so they just followed the Old Testament, and this is what we have in America. Because we don't have a democracy, we have a republic. That means we have representatives who we vote in. They're supposed to represent us because we're too busy working. So we have these people that go to the Congress and when they're looking at something to vote on, they're supposed to have the will of the people and what they're wanting, not themselves, but it's been turned around by evil and corruption because more and more people are rejecting God and they're putting him in there because all they're looking at is how can it benefit me financially? Uh, benefit me financially instead of looking at the whole picture says, what about God? God must be first because for any system, good system to work, especially our system, God must be first and everybody must believe and fear God. Without it, it's not going to work. That's why you have more police and stuff because people don't fear God. They're out there criminalizing. Now it's even worse because now you have these same corrupt people in who are mayors on city councils. They're in your school, uh, the, the school councils and all this stuff. The godly people that sit by and say, we don't need to get involved. Well, this is what happens when you don't get involved. You have ungodly people making decisions for you that affect your life and your children's life. And now you've got a mess in America and around the world. Because godly people won't step up and do what they're supposed to, even to cost your life. If you know Christ, if you know Jesus Christ, and you believe what the Bible says, and the Bible says this, if you, salvation is this, uh, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10 and 13 says this. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. It didn't say you might be saved. You may be saved. It said you shall be saved. Read it. Um, that, and it continues to say, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness with your heart, and from your heart to your mind. And with the mouth confesses, Confession is made to salvation. That means you're confessing Christ and not afraid to. Even if it costs your life, so be it. Because you're saved and you will go to heaven if you repent of your sins. That's God for forgiveness for your law breaking, which is called iniquity. It's sin. 
for breaking God's moral law, the Ten Commandments, which means you've lied, you've stolen, you've committed adultery by looking at other people with lust, you have hate in your heart, which is murder, according to Christ. He said, in your heart, you've murdered because you hate someone. Um, look at, or looking at your neighbor and want what they have. That's called coveting, creating a God in your own mind. Uh, we all have done it. We create a God who's okay with everything we do. That's called creating a, 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 a a graven image of God. He said, don't do that. Don't create that. Look, at, read the word. The word tells you what we're supposed to do. It's very simple. But we have to humble ourselves as little children to do that. So, if you got 5% of the people, here's how you're supposed to vote. Let me tell you how you vote. Any politician who believes in abortion, which is a nice word, it's a very nice word, for uh, murdering children through dismantling their members. So that means they take a suction in there and they just suck up the arms and the legs and the head and all like that. Why are the babies alive moving trying to get away from the suction thing? They show it all the time. You can watch it on YouTube. Well, uh, they might have took it off YouTube, but you can see that if you research for it. And this call, they call it abortion. No, it's called murdering children every day. Even when we had this, uh, the Wuhan virus, COVID-19, now because they don't want to offend China, right? So they call it COVID-19. Then, um, so they shut everything down, except for two things. Uh, the majority stayed open was liquor stores, and then the other one was abortion clinics. Right. That makes sense. Let's continue murdering children. We can't stop that. That's insane. Does that make any sense? But you can have riots in the street for those who believe in communists. They, they've gone in our different states and stuff, um, like Milwaukee and um, uh, uh, Minnesota area and all that, and then in Oregon and Washington, the state of Washington and Washington, D.C., and they tried to get into the president's palace and everything, and all the different places they rioted at, or they burned down people's businesses, they stole it, they call it looting, I call it stealing. They stole all their stuff out of their buildings, right? Now, that's not protest. Then they literally tell the liberal media who go along with all this, which makes no sense because if communism takes over, They'll be the first ones to hang because they're going to kill every one of them because they know their secrets, you know. But anyways, um, so they allow all that. Don't care about mass or nothing. You can do whatever. That's fine. Yeah. But then when to come back, oh, but you can't go to restaurant. You can't. Really? That makes no sense. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard of. And all this is taking your rights away. But. Most people now are blinded because they don't read the Bible daily and do what it says. If you don't read the Bible daily and do what it says, how can you say you believe in a God? How is that possible that you, you serve Christ but you don't read what he says? When he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus says that in the book of John. It's time to get off your lazy duff and work for God. Repent. Of all your laziness, repent of not doing nothing. Repent of just sitting in your nice, comfortable house with all your freedoms and doing nothing and not even reading God's word or doing what it says. You need to stand up and do what you're supposed to do. If not, we're not going to have America. We'll be gone. And America falls, the rest of them are going to fall too. Which I know we're living in the last days. I get that. But if God's people stand up, God will lift the curses that he's put on us for rejecting him. And we've seen all kinds of things. 9-11, what do you think that was? It was rejecting God, so God's trying to wake us up. And then in 2008, you had the financial crash. That was another time to wake up. And we're still having it. We've had more hurricanes and storms now. We used to have a hedge of protection. Not anymore. God took it away because we're rejecting him. Yes, there's a strong remnant of his people here 
But you got to stand up and do your part. If every Christian, there's supposed to be, I think now, 60-70% claims to be Christians. If every one of those people won one person to the Lord, that would be doubled. You know, and if you're winning more and sharing more and doing everything you can with all your gifts and talents that God's given you, we would be having this problem today. And if we go back into schools and create new schools, Christian schools, actually teaching the Word of God, or getting on the school boards and starting to change it back to where it's supposed to be at. But people just sit by. Somebody else will do it. No, it's for you to do it. We already have a call. You say, well, I don't know what my calling is. The call is Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20, the Great Commission. Say, go into all the world and teach and baptize. Get out there and teach the word of God. Preach, teach, whatever. Just talk, talk about God. Share the gospel. It's real simple. You know? Yeah, we all got fears and stuff. This is true. You think I like coming and do videos? No, I don't. But I do it. Because God put this on my heart to reach more people. And I have reached more people. A lot more than I was before. Just going from a church here to a church there. Sometimes you have 50 people, 40, 20 people, whatever. But this year I'm reaching hundreds and hopefully thousands soon. Yeah, you know, so it's more than I ever did before. So I praise God for it. Yeah. You know, I'm just a lone person with my wife. We here, we work together and... We're just doing what we can to do that. And so God put on my heart to create a Bible Education Institute, which you can write, watch all the videos on YouTube. And also, uh, you can go, here's good references right here. Go to, and you can stop the video and rerun it to rehear it. Go to Living Waters YouTube with Ray Comfort. So, it, so all this is on YouTube that you can watch. Ray Comfort, Living Waters, Ken Ham. Uh, Ashes in Genesis, uh, David Barton with Wall Builders, he teaches you all about the Christian, the the American Christian history, and when, how it was set up, he has all original documents and all this stuff going on, and you will learn so much that they don't teach in schools, period, at all, or not even in the colleges, and you can learn all this, and then, then you also have um, Dr. Walter Martin, they have all of his uh, videos on there, and it's like some of the videos don't have, uh, they, you can listen to it, but they don't have the video because there were lectures back in the like 70s and the early 80s, and he died like in 86, 87, but he'll teach you a lot about how to study the Bible, and he makes it fascinating. There's so many people that we can actually watch, and also uh, David Wilkerson, he's passed on in the 2000s, but David uh, Wilkerson, it's fantastic, and you learn a lot from him too. But there's good Bible people that actually stick with the Bible, and they don't go to the name and they claim it stuff, which is not biblical at all. If you read the Bible and you take the Bible literal, but also you have to break down the Bible into four things. Um, but you have symbolisms, and then you have illustrations, and so forth and so on. And so, Dr. Walter Martin will break it down for you. You know, that's a good place to go. These are all good uh, resources that you can go to to help you to understand and to get the word out. Everybody can have a YouTube channel or you can have a podcast. It's not hard. None of this stuff is hard to do and it's free. Um, now, if you want to make it more professional, you can do that and spend a lot of money. Whatever you want to do, that's up to you. Um, you know, you can, you can, because all this stuff is, so here the internet has created a, way for us to expand more because satan's using it why can't we use it um uh then you can like you know write books or write write articles whatever there's so many things you can do or create a, a online magazine uh great websites whatever you know all things you can do to get the gospel out you know there's many many ways or pass out gospel tracks you can go to uh, to Living Waters uh, website with Ray Comfort, and he's got wonderful uh, um, gospel tracts that are really biblical to give out. It makes it really simple, I can say. Very simple, easy. It's not, you know, to repentance. But we need to stand up and do what we're called to do. Um, let me read you this here. 
And I'm just going to read you from uh, Mark. We're going to read it. Just go to just read a little bit. And that's Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 49. And it says this. Um, then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of, of Tim, Timaeus, was sitting by the road, roadside. Now, this is the NIV, the New International Version, to make it simple for you. Um, by the roadside, begging. When he heard it, when he heard that Jesus, that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up on cheer up on your feet. He's calling you, throwing his cloak aside. He jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, Jesus said, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Now you say, what does this have to do with what we're covering? Well, I'm going to tell you what it has to do. If blind Bartimaeus did stand up and go to where Christ was, he wouldn't have got healed of his blindness. You see, he had to do something. He had to get up and go to where God is. Go to where Christ was. And we have to do the same. Get up and go to where Christ is, which is witnessing, sharing, you know. Um, so what I mean with that is, is that if you're going to serve Christ, you got to get up and do something. Because we're not going to see things change unless we do our part. Bl Blind by the Maris did his part by getting up and going and asking Christ to be healed of his blindness. And Christ did. Now, I'm not saying that a blind person can go and ask God and they go get healed. They may or may not. I don't know. That's up to God. God's in control. We're not. We don't tell God what to do. God has a reason and a purpose for everything. And no matter what state of life you're in, poor, middle class, rich, whatever, whatever country you're in, it doesn't matter. You can do something for Christ because you don't know who you're talking to. That person can change the status of your nation and you. If you just do your part by sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is what I'm doing here. So getting back to voting, if any politicians believe in abortion, which is murdering children, don't vote for them because that means because if they don't respect life, they will vote bad on everything. Everything. Then also I would stick with a group of people that you can vote for who at least acknowledges God and that abortion or murdering children is bad. If you got a group that are running and they don't believe in that, stay away from them. Get out of that group. You don't want to be there. And go to the group that at least is standing for God. Support your leaders who are godly, who are not for abortion, who are for the Bible, and they're getting a lot of flack, whether it's the president on down. Stand for those people. Work with them. Help them. Do your part in your community. We must get involved or we won't have a nation where you do have the freedom to come to Christ if you want to or not. That's just how it works. Now, if you're listening and you don't like what's going on and you fear death, if you come to Christ, that fear of death will be gone because then you know when you die, you're going to heaven. You won't be going to hell. So, repent of your sins, repentance. Uh, for God says in this world that he calls every man everywhere to repent. So, we need to, to just talk to God, prayers talking to God, and say, God, forgive me for all my sins, which is breaking your moral law, the Ten Commandments. Forgive me, and I take the trust I have in myself, and I place it to you, Jesus Christ, alone. And then start reading your Bible daily and do what it says. And start, if you're not a Christian, start in the book of John. And then when you finish that and go back to Matthew, start reading all through there. 
that at the same time just read start uh, start from uh, from Genesis the first book in Genesis of the Old Testament and start reading in there also so read some in the old and, and you can read a lot more in the new so you can just get the grasp of what Christianity is and then as you learn and grow then you can really get into the whole Bible right now we're trying to get you some basics in and if you are Christian just been lazy repent of your sins repent of your laziness ask God to to help you and to realize that if you're not doing his will you're not serving him so that means you've been lying to yourself so change it and change it now let's pray Heavenly Father all those that are watching this video put it on the hearts and minds convict them of your true gospel Lord of repentance and put in their trust in Jesus Christ as a parachute if you're in a plane that's going to crash and you put on the parachute and hang on to it to save you and Christ will save us from the judgment to come of hell so when we die we don't have any more fear and I ask you Lord to, to just put this in their minds when they lay down in Jesus name now I would also encourage you to watch Living Waters on YouTube with Ray Comfort and watch all his videos and it will encourage you and you will all start to understand he's got a lot more he has uh, old videos from the 90s and stuff you can watch and stuff um, uh, you can put Ray Comfort sermons and I'll have all his, you know from long time ago and now it's fantastic you learn a lot do it do it now